Let me show you how you can make your multiple OctoPrint install on your Raspberry Pi just a little easier to use. I've been using the multiple OctoPrint install on the Raspberry Pi for about a year now and everything has worked out well. But as you get more 3D printers and more OctoPi instances, things get just a little bit confusing. And that's because each OctoPi has its own unique IP and each instance has its own unique port number. And those can be hard to remember. Now what you could do is assign a unique DNS name to each OctoPi and then forward over to each one of those ports to be able to access all those instances. But without additional software installed and a pretty tricky configuration, that's just not going to be possible. But what we are going to do is use the existing octopi.local DNS name and then tag a folder on the end of that for each printer instance that we want to access. So we have a unique name that will make things a lot easier. So today I'm going to show you how to get the octopi.local DNS access set up and tag a name on each one of your instances so it makes things a little easier to find in your print farm. Now this video is going to be a lot of screen share. We're going to get into SSH and do Linux commands, but all the information will be in the description below. So now let's head over to the computer and get this thing configured. So let's start this off by heading over to a browser and just trying to go to octopi.local and see what we get. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash octopi.local. Now you might get lucky first time out and find an octopi.local instance. That's because if you're using Windows 10 like I am, it does have some of these services enabled to be able to find these .local addresses. But Windows 10 mostly uses that to find printers. So your results might be unpredictable, but there's a much better way to ensure that Windows and Linux machines communicate correctly, and that's by installing something called Bonjour. So let's search for Bonjour print services. We'll head to the download page. This is going to tell you a little bit more about what Bonjour does, but basically it's going to give you a set of services to be able to communicate from Windows, Apple, and Linux devices a lot easier. So let's go ahead and download. We'll click it to install. Click next, next. I'm going to uncheck both of these and we'll hit install and we'll click finish. Now you might want to restart after this, but most of the time I found that it just works out of the box. But you do need to close your browser. So we'll close the browser, we'll open a new one. So now with that installed, you should be able to go to octopi.local every time without any issues. Remember, you do have to use HTTP. So HTTP colon forward slash forward slash octopi.local. So good, we've confirmed that we haven't broken anything. Now let's get into this custom configuration. So octopi.local is great and all, but that really doesn't tell us anything about this install. And I have about six of these installs around the house, so I need to know more about this install than octopi.local. The easiest way to do that is just to change the name of this instance. So let's get into SSH. You can use octopi.local in your SSH client. So we'll open up PuTTY. Let's go to octopi.local, and we'll log in with the defaults. It's pi password raspberry. Now the easiest way to change the host name of your pi is just to use the raspi config tool. So we'll do sudo raspi dash config. Enter your sudo password, which is raspberry, and that will take us to this config tool. You can change a lot of different things in here, but we're interested in network options. So we'll go down to two, and we want to take the first one, that's host name. It's going to give you a warning about which characters you can use in your host name. So mainly, just keep it simple. We'll hit OK, and we're going to change Octopi. I'm going to make mine Octo Studio because the Pi that we're currently on is the one that's behind me here in the studio that I use for testing. So we'll hit Tab, we'll go to OK, we'll Tab to finish, and for the host name to take effect, we need a reboot. So I'll go ahead and say yes, we want to reboot now. So once the reboot's complete, we can go up here to Putty, we'll do a new session, and we'll enter Octo Studio.local. We'll say yes to the keys. We'll log in as pi, password raspberry. Now we're using the same instance, only now we have a brand new DNS name that we can use, octopistudio.local. You can see this is the same IP number as previously, now we have a new DNS name. So now with a new DNS name, it means a little more to me about the location that it lives in in the house. So now with that out of the way, we can go configure HA proxy so that we can access each instance underneath it with a slash printer name slash on the end of that DNS name. 
So let's change directory into etc slash ha proxy. You're only going to have a couple of files in this directory, and what we're interested in is haproxy.cfg. The first thing you want to do is copy that haproxy.cfg somewhere else so that you have a default copy in case something goes wrong. If something does go wrong, you can come in here, rename those files, and it should start working again with a default config. So we're going to do sudo space cp to copy space haproxy.cfg space the file to copy it to haproxy.cfg underscore old one. And we'll hit enter. In your sudo password, raspberry. And now if you do an ls, you can see we have our old haproxy config in that underscore old one. So now we have one for safekeeping. So now let's edit our haproxy file. So we'll do sudo nano haproxy.cfg. Now this is the default haproxy file that comes with your Octoprint install, and if you haven't installed any extra cameras, it should still be the very same as when you first installed it. So we'll scroll down to front end public. So right now, other than your webcam back end, all you have is the default back end. So anytime you go to that address, it's going to default to the back end of Octoprint. Basically, all we have to do is create a couple of additional back ends and point them at the correct location so that we can access them with that URL. So I currently have my MK2 on my default back end, and I have log on my 5001 port, so my second instance. So let's add a back end for log. So we'll do use underscore backend, we'll call the backend log, and we'll do an if statement, curly bracket, space, if the path begins with a slash log slash curly bracket. This is what tells it where to go when you point it at that URL, which backend to use. Now we need to add the backend entry. So I'm just going to copy the default backend entry for Octoprint. I'll come down to the bottom of the file and paste it, and then we can make the changes. So we'll change the backend name to log. We'll come down to the first schema line. This is what is expecting in that URL bar. So we'll go to the first forward slash. I'm going to put in log and then another forward slash. Make sure you don't add any spaces or any other characters. These have to be exact. And then we'll come down to which Octoprint server we want to use. This can be pretty much any name, but I'm also going to name this one to log to make things a little more clear. We'll use the localhost IP 127.0.0.1, and the port for the first instance is 5001. So the default one is 5000, the next one's 5001. This is all covered in the first multi Octoprint install video. Now, the only thing we have to do is add one more entry for our X script name. This is the line that's going to allow us access to that forward slash log entry. So we'll add a line underneath server. We need it to say req add x dash script dash name colon backslash space forward slash and then the name that you wanted to use for your instance URL. So this one, log. Now if you want to add all your other instances to this file so that you can access them this way, all you have to do is repeat these entries up here in the front end. So just add an additional one for your new printer. Say it's an ANET, just add one that says ANET. And then add another back end entry for that ANET, just make sure that you increment the port to the correct instance. So however you access that instance now, say it's on port 5003, it needs to say 5003 right here. And that should be it. So control X to exit, hit Y to save, and hit enter. And you shouldn't even have to reboot to get this to work. All you have to do is restart the haproxy service. So we'll do sudo service haproxy restart. And if you have an error in your haproxy file, it's going to list it right down here underneath and it won't start that service. But you can also do an haproxy status if you want to see what the service is doing. And here you can see it's active and running. So now we'll head back to our browser and try it out. So we need to go to http colon forward slash forward slash octostudio.local. This should take us to our main instance for our MK2 and that's still correct, but now in the URL bar, if you just add a log forward slash to the end of that and hit enter, it's going to take you to another instance running on that same Octopi, but now we've named it log, so we don't have to remember the port number, and we don't have to remember the IP. 
everything should work exactly the same as it did before. And there it is. Now hopefully that was an easy enough guide to follow. Again, there will be more information in the description below. But now you should be able to change your Octopi DNS name to something that's a little more relevant to you and change each one of the instance names to something that you can navigate to in the URL bar. Now I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.